Welcome to video number three. This is a video about our funding database. Currently, our database has over 600 charities sourced by us, with more added each month. This is by far the largest database of postgraduate funding sources, and should be your first point of call when finding funding. So you can use this database to browse, or you can use it to search. The search criteria are firstly age, whether you're 25 or under, or over 25. That's a common cut-off point for um, uh, many charities. Your subject of study is another one, whether you're part-time or full-time, and your nationality. Remember that as Shusey says, more charities are added to the funding database each month, and they're listed in the Crow, which is our bi-monthly free email newsletter, which you can sign up for. OK, so we're now going to have a look in more detail at the funding database. To get to the funding database, just simply click on its icon here, funding database, or optionally you can click funding database here from the top menu, or it's actually under license as well. So here we are. Now, you can use the funding database in a variety of ways. So the first way you can use it very simply is just through name. This only is really useful if you know the name of the charity that you are applying for or that you want to try and find. So say you want to find, for example, the Frederick Soddy Foundation. You can just go in there and type in Soddy and click search. And there you go, there it is. You also see that if the charity has a website in its description, um, you can click on it and you'll go straight to the website of that charity. Note that probably only around a third of these charities do have websites, that's simply because most charities don't have websites, but there will be a postal address there if there isn't a website. And there's usually a description, a very short description, which should really just give you enough information to decide whether or not you should approach it with an initial letter of inquiry as we speak about in the requesting forms section. OK, so the next way you can use the database is through criteria. Get rid of um, Soddy there in the box. Now, you've got four areas by that you can select here. One is age, one is nationality, one is subject area, and one is mode of study. Now, do note that you are able to select an any option um, for all of these things. So you can select any age, 25 or under, or 26 plus. So let's go with 26 plus for argument's sake here. Nationality, British citizen, EU citizen, international student, or any nationality. Let's go with international student. Then we've got subject area two. You can have any subject, or you can simply select the subject that you are. Let's say science, maths, and engineering. Part-time and full-time, obviously you are only part-time or full-time, you can't be both of those things simultaneously. So just click the um, one which applies to you. So let's go with full-time. So we've got here a, um, a international student who's 26 years old or over, studying science, maths and engineering, and is studying full-time. Let's click Submit and see what the database gives us. So, as we can see, we've got a pretty long list here lots of bodies. It is a large database. One thing though I should say is that quite a lot of the bodies that come up for one search, for example 26 plus international student science, maths and engineering, will come up as well if you select different criteria. If you select for example less than 26 or a different subject. The simple reason for that is because a lot of charities actually don't mind what age you are, what subject you're studying, whether you're part-time or full-time, or what nationality you are. A lot of them are simply very, very open. And so think of these criteria here as a filtering mechanism rather than a device by which you, you pinpoint a small number of perfect bodies. You will still have to scroll down quite a long list of bodies and read a lot of descriptions um, to, to narrow your search down. It's just simply the nature of charities and trusts that they are like this. So another really useful way you can use this database, almost arguably maybe even the most useful way, 
is let's just go and reset all these. You can simply use a free text search. Now a free text search simply searches the name of the charity and all of the information here that you can see in the descriptions of each of these charities. So for example, we could for example type the word women, for example, you know, if you're um, a if you're a female applicant. And you'll find here that a variety of bodies here have come up. These are ones that have women in the title, so you've got the um, uh, Altruza Careers Trust, which is open to UK women, East Africa Women's Benevolent League, Sylvia Fund, Women's Careers Foundation, Women Continuing Ministerial Education Trust, Yorkshire Ladies Council of Education, etc. So probably around 25, 30 or so bodies there which have women in the title. You could also, for example, go with a location. Maybe if you live in London. Sometimes these charities are locally based as well. And you can find that quite a lot of these are London based ones. So, for example, the first one, Aldgate and All Hallows Barking Exhibition Foundation, that's for students living in Tower Hamlets in London. Christchurch of Southwark Educational Foundation for people living in SE1 and SE17 postcodes in London. Quite a few here for London, in fact. Probably around 50 in total, with some London connection of some kind. So yeah, just, just simply get creative um, uh, with the free text search. You can, if you like, you can actually select um, uh, these categories and go for, say, 26 plus, British citizen, arts and humanities, etc., search that and then you'll get the list there of charities which apply to those students and then you can use a free sex search just on those so you can actually use both to get two filtering mechanisms so I'll for example here type in the word research maybe I'm interested in research expenses for example and so now I've got a quite specialist list which is for someone of more than 26 who's a British citizen doing humanities and social sciences full time and his interest and the word research appears in the description or the name. So as you can see through using these open categories you can actually get something which is quite specific and in this case we've probably reduced a list of around of 600 charities down to maybe around 40 or 50 something like that so as I say it is a very useful filtering mechanism if you use it creatively and you use it wisely now what you should do of course when you've used this database to find some very interesting charities is you should note the addresses you should note the website and you should contact that charity to make sure you're eligible and to request forms and um, uh, that's what we'll talk about um, in the next main section. So that's the funding database. Do remember that although this is a fantastic resource and should be your first port of call, it isn't anything like comprehensive. There are hundreds of thousands of charities out there in Britain alone. And if you want to spread the net more widely and raise a very large amount of money, then it's essential that you look in other places as well. Have a look in the Finding Funding section in order to get more ideas of where to hunt for funding beyond just our database. So that's the introduction to our funding database. Thanks for listening. We always welcome recommendations for new charities. So if you have any recommendations or notice any mistakes in our database, then please email us at inquiries at